So one of the issues that we have to deal with is with buddy aid is, is or sulfate, is it going to be so painful that you're not going to tolerate it? You know, you, you can't do it. I mean, if, you, if it is, and if you have multiple injuries, you can't, um, you'll only apply it on one and you'll bleed to death on the others because the rest of the it hurts too bad on the other one. So I wanted to find out as soon as we got sterile product to make sure that it's, it's very, it's tolerable enough that you can self-apply and you would keep self-applying if you had multiple ones. Now I'm prepping with alcohol, in all honesty, in, in the real world you've got blood pouring everywhere. Prepping's probably not realistically going to happen, and certainly not on the battlefield, but since I don't have blood pouring out and I'm not going to get debrided later, I, I figure I better should go ahead and prep. I'm just demonstrating it from just more of a clinical concept of how this functions. So, if I have a bleeding wound here, I open up the package, take it from the package, you can see it's got to these needles, I apply it to the wound center and just squeeze the, the device. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> Maybe about a one. So it's not pain free. I mean, you feel needles go in your skin. Right now, I'm cognizant that it's there, but it's not an ongoing agony or like, oh my gosh. Now, that said, you've got you know IV drug abusers who, if you walk in the room with a needle 20 feet from them, they scream. So there's going to be some people who will react to pain. But um, yeah, this is really not, um, this is very tolerable, especially if you consider that I'm not distracted. I'm focused only on this and I'm applying it to myself. Um, it's, it's very tolerable. It's much more comfortable than you would think it would be. Uh, if I had a big bleeding laceration, I'm not even anticipating that this would be an issue with this How would you compare it to like an IV poke or suture oh, without local? Substantially less than an IV poke. Um, the, ins the needle insertion on a local is, is less, but the, the in installation of, of drugs is a lot worse. I've had two easy IOs because I used to be in charge of marketing there, and they're worse, so they're very low pain. I don't know what you guys did, those are worse. But, um, they're worse than this is, and that's very low pain. So I, I would put this truly on about a one, maybe you know one and a half at the most, um, in terms of the insertion pain. In place, you know, I all I can do is I mean I can feel it. I know it's there. Um, I know it's there a little bit more than maybe a binder clip because I can actually feel that it's it's really grabbed on. But it's not like I'm you know in agony or anything like that. It's just kind of <laughs> conscious that it's there. If y'all were also starting 14 gauge IVs on me right now and putting me on oxygen and throwing me on a backboard and cutting my clothes off like you would in a real trauma patient, I probably would forget that this is on at this stage. We're hoping sometime in March or in there, there in the second quarter, but it's so hard to predict. There's just no way to know. Uh, but we anticipate it to go further. So you're going to bleed when you take it off? I will. I'll actually have some capillary oozing. So when I did it the first time, I, I just put a, a paper towel over it on the side and have 4x4s. Four and I just wrapped it up, and I, you know, an hour or two later, I took it off, and I just had some spots of blood, and that was it. So it wasn't like it bled through or anything like that. So to remove it, just like we showed, you have to actually squeeze it down, and then you have to press these pins in, and then rotate it out. They're about three of, so 20 gauge, give or take. It's not precisely 20 gauge. So you can see every now and then you get like one little spot that's going to be a good bleeder, um, and that's the, the extent of the hemorrhage from the needle. I've actually done a couple of I.O. Uh, demos and it hurts more than you described, at least in the cases where we did it. Did y'all do infusion or just insertion? We did infusion. The insertion yeah, part was fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's why it hurts. Yeah. No, I mean, the first thing I've not had it infused because in the settings I was in, we didn't have a, a clinician who could legally yeah. infuse anything. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, infusion off the charts. You know, man, it's lidocaine, you got you. Yeah, we we videoed um, one and it was, oh, geez, that wasn't too bad. Oh Jesus, that hurt! Uh, insertion as as the infusion is, started. Is really yeah, yeah, yeah. The insertion wasn't bad. Need a little well. lidocaine to go in first. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. We discovered that. Right. Any questions? Oh, that was interesting. Well, that kind of addresses the one concern yeah. about the study. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think on your um, patients in the study, I mean, you're going to have some that are scream like you're killing them. I mean, yeah. Like, you're going to have those anyway. I mean, you walk in the room, like literally just an ambulance and see needles and stuff, but. Um, I think most patients, particularly anybody who's distracted with trauma, I think really don't think there's going to be an issue. And the moment you stick the 14 gauge, this is going to be forgotten immediately. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always love the guys with piercings and covered in tattoos and whining and complain when they get the IV poke. Uh -huh. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> They're always the worst, actually. Yeah. They want yeah. to complain the most. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for the demo. Yeah, that was cool.